The latest cybersecurity masters from WGU is really quite good to be honest and has made a lot of improvements over the previous version. The whole degree was basically redone and now it includes some actual good certifications. So in this video, I'm going to be doing a brief overview of the program as a whole. I'm gonna do a complete comparison between the old program and the new program to kind of see what's changed. I'm gonna go over all the certifications in the new program to see how useful they are in terms of employer demand and awareness, like how much they appear in job descriptions. I'm gonna to cover the optional certifications in the program to see if they're quote unquote worth it or not. I'm going to show what an example resume might look like for someone who's already gone through this program and gotten all the certs and everything. I'm going to talk about the jobs I've had since I've gotten this degree. And then finally, I'm going to share my thoughts on if I think you should actually go ahead and try to get the master's degree or not. So whether or not you're thinking about getting a master's degree or you're just interested in cybersecurity, this video will definitely help. So getting right into the program overview, for those of you who don't even know what WGU is, it's an online accredited self-paced university. And it's kind of special in the sense that you pay for a term at a time, which is six months, and you're allowed to complete as many classes as you can in that six month time period. So if you have really good planning and execution, it's possible you just finish the whole curriculum in six months, and then you have a degree for you know under $5,000. That, that is possible. It can be difficult, but it, it is possible to do. If you're interested, definitely check out this video. I do a bit more of a deep dive on that whole process. So touching on the actual master's cybersecurity program itself, the curriculum is a aligned to the NICE framework, the NSA's Center of Academic Excellence Guidelines, the CISSP Common Body of Knowledge, as well as government initiatives. So what does all of this mean exactly? So first, the NICE framework, that's National Institute of Cyber Education. This just basically ensures that the curriculum aligns with stuff that's actually happening in the real world. Like it makes sure that you're learning relevant skills. And then the National Security Agency Center of Academic Excellence designation, it's pretty similar to the NICE framework in the sense that it's kind of like um, the NSA's blessing that your curriculum is good and aligns with what's needed in the real world, essentially. And then the CISSP common body of knowledge, for those who don't know, the CISSP is basically like the, the GOAT of cybersecurity certifications in the sense that it's super broad and everybody knows about it and it has the absolute most job hits. Like if you search for CSSP on Indeed or something versus Security Plus, it has the, the most job hits. And the organization who manages and maintains CSSP recognizes eight different security domains. And then the cybersecurity master's degree at WGU is aligned to those domains. And then finally, like government initiatives, there's this thing called like DOD 8570 and DOD 8140. It kind of lists out a bunch of different certifications that are required for different levels of government work. And all of the certifications in the cybersecurity master's program, except for one, fall on that chart, if that makes sense. So that's what they mean by uh, government initiatives. In other words, certain government jobs and defense contracts can require certain certifications, like different levels of certifications, and they just made sure to in include those certs in the master's program, if that makes sense. It's obvious a lot of thought went into the curriculum to make sure that it actually aligns with reality, because that's kind of the problem with school these days. So I think they did a, a really good job on this. Now getting into the old program versus new program comparison to kind of see what they've added, removed, and changed. Uh, on the left, obviously, is the old one. Um, so this C725, this used to be the kind of intro to the, the whole program. And they still have it, but it looks like they renamed it to something else. And then they added a certification with it as well. Um, secure network design, the same class exists on, exists on both. It was just redone on this one. Um, they added security operations and then um, tied that to the CISA exam. So it if the exam, by the way, if the certification doesn't say optional next to it, it means that it's actually part of the program and you have to get it. So um, to pass a security operations class, it looks like there is a performance assessment or an essay you have to do and you have to pass the CIS, CompTIA, CISA or CYSA exam. And they always provide, um, you know, quote unquote, enough material for you to study and be able to pass them in case anyone's wondering about that. Um, they removed ethical hacking and replaced it with um, pen test plus, which is good in my opinion. Before you, you used to have to get a certified ethical hacker and a lot of people complained about this, in, including me. I didn't want to be forced to get that exam or to take that exam. Um, I don't really care about pen test plus to be honest, but I would prefer to take that over CH, so that's good. Um, they added cloud security, which I think is really fantastic because I don't want to say everything is in the cloud these days, but everything is kind of in the cloud these days. And my last several jobs were heavily cloud centric. So I think it's really smart that they added that. 
Um, government Risk and Compliance, aka GRC, they added this. It's completely new. Uh, I think that's really, really smart as well because the last, well, the job before the last one I had was like super heavy into GRC and it's just good to like understand that in general if you want to work in cybersecurity regardless of the domain. So it's cool they added that. Um, they just redid secure software design. I don't know exactly what they changed. I could deep dive on those, but it'll probably take like quite a while for me to do. But um, they they redid cybersecurity architecture and engineering. And after you finish this class, you get an optional voucher to take uh, CASP. This is part of, well, remember all these, all these certifications are part of the DOD um, 8570, 8140. Um, so just keep that in mind. I don't think this one is, but um, you know that's okay. So I'm going to talk about. We're going to do a examination on this and see if it's quote unquote worth it to get the optional uh, CASP and CISM later. And it looks like they took the two cybersecurity management um, classes and combined them into a single one, and then um, gave you the option to take the CISM exam. That's Certified Information Security Management, I believe. Um, there are some implications to take this exam, like you need five years experience, but you can still take the GAMP exam and then receive like, a, I forget what it's called, like interim system or something. Um, but you like once you meet the requirement, then um, you'll you'll be able to be blessed by ISACA and then you can you know be a, a certified, you know, certification holder or whatever. Graduate capstone, it looks like they redid this. And thank goodness, I shouldn't say that, but I didn't care for this class much, but they, they removed uh, forensics and network intrusion. These were two EC council certifications. So um, yeah, I'll put a link to this in the description as well. If you want to like, you know, inspect on your own and, and play around with it a bit, but yeah, these are the, the differences. And again, I, I really, um, I don't know if I can say this, but I really approve of the changes they made to this um, degree program. They put a lot of relevant stuff in here and, and changed it for the better, I feel. Next, we're going to look at the certifications in the program and see if they're worth it in terms of job demand and employer awareness. So basically, where you're looking at here, you can probably like derive it without me saying anything, but these are all the classes, right? And then these are the certifications that correspond to each class. And then these are the actual job hits I found on Indeed. So for example, I went to Indeed and I searched like certified in cybersecurity with quotes and four jobs came out, right? I searched uh, CompTIA CYSA and 1513 jobs came out, 1500 jobs. Same with this and same with all of these. So, and if you're wondering like, oh, like is 1513 a lot? Is this a lot? Blah, blah, blah. F uh, like for reference over here, I put like CompTIA Security Plus. These are kind of like the two um, kind of mainstream certifications that people think of when they think of cybersecurity is like Security Plus and CSSP. CSSP has like the most hits out of any cybersecurity certification that I'm aware of. And, you know, CompTIA has like a pretty decent amount. So relative to these, um, you know, CISA is a pretty decent, CASP is pretty decent, and CISM, um, it's pretty decent as well. These are all really good certs um, in the sense that people kind of tend to know what they are, and they're all part of the DOD like 8570 and 8140 initiative if you're interested in working in like the government or defense contract in some capacity. So in my opinion, like the, the two optional ones, um, these are definitely worth it. And if you get a voucher for free, I, I would recommend um, just trying to take it, to be honest. If you want to, like, if you don't want to spend too much time, like, studying and all that when you're, like, inside of your term, what you could do is you could figure out a way to study for these certifications beforehand, like, study up CASP, like, a lot before you even register, study up CISM, like, a lot before you even register. So once you get to the class, you pass the class and get your voucher, you can just take it straight away without having to worry about um, studying for it and like wasting time in your term and like, you know, stretching it out into two terms or something if you don't want to do that. Um, but yeah, these, these two, like you have to get these anyway, you know, certified in cybersecurity. It's, it's good, I guess, that you have a cert better than not, but you have to get it anyway. Um, Pentest Plus, I don't really care about it, to be honest. It doesn't have that many hits, but it does teach you some pen testing methodology and you, you kind of, get a cert along the way anyway. But yeah, in my opinion, these two, um, they're definitely worth it to get, I would say. 
Next, we're going to look at what a resume might look like for someone who's graduated with this program. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a link for this in the description. And I used to do this a lot, like I would make a resume, like what I wanted my future resume to look like. And I would, I would like go through the actions to fill it in, like get the relevant degrees and certs to kind of make my resume um, into a reality, if that makes sense. So go ahead and download this and use it. But um, I just kind of made this, uh, of course, you graduated with this degree. That's what the video is about. Maybe you got the bachelor's degree from uh, WGU. The bachelor's degree is what actually earned WGU, the NSA's Center of Academic Excellence. Again, check out this video. Um, I go in depth on that. These are all the certifications that you get uh, in the program. I just ordered them in, um, I just ordered them in like order of most job hits, I believe. I hope I didn't mess that up. I just put a project section here. Um, by the way, this whole thing is like part of my course. I, I teach a like a hands-on cybersecurity course where we use the cloud, which is Azure, where we use the cloud and we create like a honey net and a sock and we deal with live attack traffic on the internet. So that's kind of what this looks like. Um, the students who go through my course end up having some resume entry that looks something like this. And there's also um, like an internship component in the course as well. So if you need that kind of extra thing to help you go from like having certifications and degrees to actually having a job. You might want to look into the course. Um, this is the U URL for it up here, but this is the um, internship experience and then whatever, you know, your previous experience might be. And then, you know, I like to uh, summarize my subsequent job so it doesn't take up too much space on the resume. And then of course the skills and technologies uh, section down here for keyword matching. And I, I tried to design this resume to be um, easily digestible by humans. Like you notice if you look at this as a human, it's pretty easy to read in the beginning. There's like a huge block of text and it's also easily readable by ATS like applicant application applicant tracking systems like the automated resume scanner, right? So definitely use this. I'll put a link for it in the description. And then next, I'm gonna talk about the two jobs I've had since actually getting this degree. So I got this degree in 2020. So I, I got it kind of like in the middle of this job. So I, I was doing like cybersecurity program manager work specifically for vulnerability management. And at that time, even like the, the old version of the degree, like super, super lined up with what I was doing in my day-to-day -day job. It felt like uh, my job was like the homework and then I didn't have to study anything and I could just like take the tests and pass them. It was like, it was really crazy. Um, specifically like the risk assessments portions, like the government's governance risk and compliance, especially that really aligned well with what I was doing. But basically, yeah, it aligned really, really well. Uh, this job, I, I got paid 130K. And then the next job I had after, um, when, after getting the master's degree is this principal cybersecurity analyst job. This is a bit of a misleading uh, title. And I was also a contractor. I wasn't like a full-time Microsoft person, but um, in this job, I did a lot of um, like security framework. If you look up um, Azure Security Benchmark, it's called something else now, actually. Um, it's like Microsoft Cloud Security Benchmark. I was on the team who, who worked on that. And um, so it's like a lot of uh, security controls and bench, benchmarks and um, security guidance, like official one for Microsoft where my team was developing those. And then for me, I was just, I was doing like a lot of automation for them to help facilitate like what they were trying to do. So the master's degree, like it didn't completely align with that job, but um, in order to do my job well, it, it's good that I knew the stuff that was on the master's degree, if, if that makes sense. So I guess, yeah, it was kind of useful for this job, but it was way more useful for my program manager job, I would say, definitely. So getting into if I think it's worth it or not, uh, def definitely I think it's worth it because I have it myself. Um, it just comes down to your order of operations and like, where you are in your career. So generally speaking, I, I generally don't recommend people to get a master's degree if they don't have experience yet. But in this case, um, it just kind of depends, right? If you have enough time and money and energy, you know, there's no rules that say that you can't work on a master's degree and like job hunt at the same time or work on a master's degree and work in help desk at the same time, especially this one, because it it's so good to be honest and it's so inexpensive because it's like competency based and you pay for a term at a time. Not only, not only that, all the certifications in there are so good and like the designation by the NSA, it's just, 
really good. So if you have money, like, yeah, go ahead and like just start getting it regardless if, if you have experience or not, because it, it's just going to help you in the end. But, you know, depending on like how much money and time you have, you might want to wait until you're working first. But that's just that's just my opinion. I do recommend checking out the employability framework video. It really outlines the way you should think when you're trying to job hunt, like what you need to pay attention to and like what's important, right? If you if you really just want to be highly employable and able to find jobs or like move up in your current role or something like that, definitely check out this video. But yeah, I hope you liked my analysis. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.